Welcome to the cow eye dissection walkthrough. I'm going to show you the necessary steps to perform a dissection for a cow eye, as well as point out significant features of the eye itself. This is your cow eye. The first thing you will notice about the eye is the white outer layer known as the sclera, the fatty tissue surrounding the eye for support, and the cornea and conjunctiva. The sclera is the tough white outer layer of the eye. The conjunctiva is another transparent layer on the outside of the cornea and the sclera up to the eyelids. It provides moisture to the eye. The cornea is a clear transparent layer formed from the sclera. The front section acts as a fixed lens and begins the focusing of light on the retina. But first, to dig deeper into the eye, we need to cut through some fatty tissue. This can be done with scissors or with a scalpel in hand. Now we begin the dissection. We start by cutting through the cornea, but be careful not to cut all the way if you want to preserve the lens. You'll know you've cut through when the aqueous humor, which is the jelly-like filling in the anterior cavity of the eye, shoots out. Its purpose is to keep the, the eye's shape and apply pressure and provide nutrition to the ocular tissues. Next. We want to cut through the sclera to gain access to the other parts of the eye. We start by making an incision on the side towards the middle of the sclera and we continue this all the way around until we have the cornea and the bottom of the eye. As was our case, a jelly-like liquid called the vitreous humor flowed out of the eye, but if you're lucky, it won't come out and stay on the bottom. It holds the eye together and gives its shape. It is made of mostly proteins and water. When that's finished, you should have the cornea and the bottom part of the eye. In the bottom, you will find the lens, which is a transparent protein disc attached and suspended from the ciliary body by suspendary ligaments. The lens completes the focusing of light onto the fovea. The fovea is a high concentration of the cone cells associated with color vision and the center of the field of vision. Its location is on the retina. If we go back to the cornea, we can focus on the iris and the pupil. The iris is formed from the choroid layer that gives the colored portion of the eye. The iris can regulate the amount of light entering the eye. The pupil is the hole in the center of the iris through which light passes to the retina. When it's bright, the pupil narrows, and when it's dark, the pupil widens. When we take the rest of the vitreous humor out, we notice the shiny part on the back of the eye. It's called the tepidatum lucidum, which reflects the light back through the retina, increasing the light available to photoreceptors. Many vertebrates have them, and it's useful for low light situations. Humans don't have them, this however, but we have a choroid, which is a thin pigmented layer that absorbs scattered light in the eye. This is the retina. It is located around the choroid towards the inner of the eye, and is located towards the back of the eye. It uses photoreceptive tissue and neurons to detect light. Light is coming through the eye from the ganglion cells to the photoreceptors, and there are three layers of neurons, photoreceptors, bipolar, and ganglion cells, which also reflects the order of activity. The ganglion cells and bipolar cells are also transparent and do not significantly reduce the intensity of light passing to the photoreceptor. The photoreceptor absorbs the light, and the head of the photoreceptor cell contains the light-sensitive pigments. The bipolar cell responds to by changing the rate of the neurotransmitter released to the ganglion cell. The ganglion cell generates the impulse which will travel along the axon of the ganglion to the brain. They group together to form the optic nerve. This is the optic nerve. It is shown as the white extension from the fatty tissue in the middle in the back of the eye contains all the nerves from the photoreceptors and connects to the brain so it can see. Thank you for watching our presentation and I hope you gain insights on how an eye works and how to perform a necessary eye dissection.